Well, welcome to the Beyond Cinema and Bio.com studio up here at TIFF, Ms. Liv Ullman. Um, firstly, congratulations on being back in the director's chair. It's been a little while. You had kind of a string there for a while. How, how come you, you know, what was that process of, of waiting? Was it waiting for the right material or was it, you know, what was the, what was the driving force behind it? Well, it was partly waiting for the right material, but also because I did a lot of theatre productions as a director. I, I did a few things on the stage, but I've stopped as an actress. But to be in the theatre and to be a director and working with incredible people, both in the United States, Australia, Norway, was what I wanted to. And then suddenly this came, and I was surprised to hear. It's 15 years ago since I did a movie, because to me, Oh, <laughs> it was like yesterday. I was very surprised the to hear that. Flying. Yeah, um, and to work with like a, the material of a Scandinavian legend in Strindberg um, was this material that you'd been, you know, highly familiar with for a long time, or was it something that you were discovering and you? For... No, I know Strindberg uh, well, although I have never played him. And when I was young, I would have liked to do Miss. Julie, but it wasn't a dream. But when I was asked to write a movie and it should be on Femme Fatale, the producer said. They had three women directors from all over the world make a movie about Femme Fatale. And I don't know so much about Femme Fatales. And then suddenly I got an idea what about Miss Julie by Strindberg? I can adapt that. And they obviously thought she was a femme fatale, and I never told them that, that she wasn't. And uh, that's how it became. Miss Julie, because I know a lot in that movie, a lot in his play, is what I want to talk about. Who we are and why we are, and uh, see each other, listen to me, I want to listen to you. And, and the class and man and woman, all of that is incorporated in this thing. And when I adapted it and made it into a, a movie, I, I saw that Miss Julie is so much more than I really believed. So, I had, of course, the Swedish or, or original movie, and I had a lot of English translations and German, and with all this, I adapted it and made it a movie about what I really would like to say today. So you did watch, like, kind of the other movies that had been made? You didn't shy away from them? Uh, no, I didn't really. I watched a very old one, yeah. a Swedish one, uh, and I, no, I didn't see movies. I, I, I read different translations. Uh, and how, and like obviously this cast as well is pretty phenomenal. Um, in terms of, to, I kind of feel like if you ask anybody to do anything, then they're pretty prone to saying yes. Yeah, I was lucky and I had just had a very successful uh, theatre play with Kate Blanchett in Australia and in New York, uh, Streetcar Named Desire, which was incredibly uh, successful. So I think actors know I'm good with actors, not that I'm good for them, but I'm good for them in terms of believing they are creative. It comes from them. I'm not coming to them with my homework and do like I would have done or the way I've seen it. I pick wonderful actors and then they have all my trust and uh, and they are the creators. And I think actors know that and I think that's why. So did, did anyone, were, were all these guys, like Jessica, Colin, were they all, like you just went straight to them, they were your first choices, I would imagine? Yeah, I would say first choices. And Jessica I met and had some meetings with, and we talked about the thing, and you know, a lot of that inspired me also in things that I wanted to put in the script, and Colin, I actually mostly talked on the phone and he is so spiritual, so wonderful and because I didn't want a macho man who was doing all these macho things that they often do on stage with his part, I wanted a man who understood that this time the servant was trying to be the baron, was trying to look like him and act like him and turns horrible when he feels that his territory is uh, invaded. And he was fantastic. And Samantha Morton, it oozes from her talent, creativity. And I was lucky because we had six days or seven days of rehearsal and all of them 
and they are film stars, and I was very nervous, and I think I wrote to them, know some of the text, we have so little time, and please know some of the text. They came, first rehearsal, they knew the whole play, and it's full of monologues and everything. They knew the whole play by heart, and so we could have great rehearsals, and when we started the movie, which was a short time, less than 30 days, uh, we could go right into the heart. That must have been a luxury for them as well, being able to get a rehearsal, because on so many of their projects, they probably just jumped straight in. Yeah. So it was probably part of this kind of hybrid process that enabled them to feel kind of more appreciated. Yeah, I don't think we could have done it almost without rehearsals, because it's uh, you go far into the people, you know, it's, it's a tough movie to do for actors and actually also for the director, but for the actors and they needed that time because they gave everything. When Jessica cries, she doesn't cry, she sobs, it comes from far, far in where most actresses, you know, they cry and they're so sweet and you want to embrace them. She sobs and you don't know if you love her or if you hate her and that's what Miss Julie is all about. And having that mood that you're creating, is that is that something that you, is it something that you're emulating because it's something you appreciated as an actor? Um, or is it is it something that you know that you learn from different directors? And if so, what are the kind of the obvious references and the best sets, the best directors that you that taught you that that process? Well, you know, I learn most from the bad directors because I know what not to do. You know, they tell you you come in and you're so full of love, and then you count to three, don't say anything, count to three, and then you say very quickly, I love you, and then you do something like that. You know, I can never do that scene because I would feel idiotic. Good director does not go in and stamp on your fantasy, on your heart, and uh, that's what I do. Uh, they know certain things that I want in the movie and hope for in the movie and we discuss that and what they would like to do but they know at the moment they are in front of that camera that is them to bloom it is me not standing behind and tell them how they should bloom you know i don't water a lily hoping it will be a, a, a rose yeah and for you kind of watching actors uh, does that feed your soul as well like do you kind of sometimes kind of want to kind of switch positions for certain things? No. I thought so. The first movie I did, I thought, oh, I'm going to sit there and, you know, I know I could do that. And the moment, and this was in the first days, and the moment, it was a movie called Sophia, she had a long thing with, it was showing on her face that a man had left her and the parents had helped, you know, whatever it was. And I started to look at her. I couldn't have thought of any of those things that were suddenly happening in her face. And that's what's brilliant with movies, because on stage you see them, you know, the figure, you see everything. In a movie, that thing, that camera, comes close, close to you, and it comes out of what that actress knows about life, knows about themselves, knows about what it means to be a human being. And I never, never have felt when they are doing it, oh, I could have done this better. Never, never. That's great. And in terms of uh, you personally, do you still, do you go to the movies? Are you a consumer of cinema as well? Yeah, it's, it's my... It's my life, I really feel, and I'm at an age now that I can, you know, oh, I, you know, my grandchildren and, and, and all of this. It's not the truth. I am so alive, sincerely, mostly, when I sit at my table and I'm writing, I'm adapting, if you can do that for the stage too, and, and doing this thing, creating. When I am creative, then leave is alive. And when I'm not, um, I don't know what to do. So uh, this is uh, who I am. Yeah. And you mentioned like going to Australia and stuff with Kate. Um, this film was shot in, in Ireland, was it in Northern Ireland? Yes. Um, so what did that bring, that whole process of going there? It brought a lot because, you know, it is a Swedish play, but they couldn't speak Swedish. Uh, 
they couldn't speak English because it's an English spoken film in Sweden. That looks ridiculous. So where do I go where they can speak English? And Ireland, I think, had a lot of the class system that uh, August Strindberg had for his thing. And going to Ireland too, I feel the people there are somehow close to Scandinavians. I mean, Norwegians were there and the Swedes, we were there hundreds of years ago and we raped and we did a lot of things. So we are very much there. You know, they all have blue eyes and they are, are blonde. So I liked it for that. And Colin Farrell, he is... Uh, Irish, and for one more thing, I found the castle, which is the castle I'm using, and although this movie is about the Midsummer Night, whole Midsummer Night, uh, and they were looking out of the window, looking at the sun and everything, when I found that castle and I saw that the servants, they never could look out of a window, because outside the window there was a white wall because servants and people of that class, they live under the earth. And we got that for free, and I had to rewrite the script, and I made those windows about someone who is living under the earth. Um, a, final, a final question, and perhaps the most obvious reference, but if you learned one particular thing from Ingmar, um, what was it? Uh, trust and respect. You'll find bad directors, they will have a lot of people around them that doesn't know anything, so they can be the master. I know, I surround myself on the floor, not outside, but on the floor with the best of people, because then I don't have to be the master. Then I'm supported in this dream that I have a creative thing where I believe movies today is one of the most important things when people still can say what is truth and you can still recognize what it means to be a human being. Very cool. Well, we appreciate you coming in. It's been a pleasure talking Thank with you. Thank you. I appreciate being here too.